I came up with the title Stories for the Apocalypse a few years ago and contrary to what people tend to assume it wasn't about the pandemic it was before that something deeper was simmering rotting but something was bubbling under the surface that I felt deeply uncomfortable with it wasn't an obvious thing I found that there was a mania in modern society maybe it was the pace of life maybe it was the incessant demands people tend to create in their own head to be seen to be doing something good whether it's the illusion of success whether it's looking beautiful whether it's wonderful idyllic family life exciting life in the city and all the while corruption was going on climate change ecosystems were on the brink and nobody seemed to know about it maybe people did know about it but we tend to block out the things that we cannot process and our day-to-day -day lives are just so fast and furious that I found not just myself on a private brink but everyone seemed to be just about holding it together and every now and again somebody would plunge somebody would crack drink drugs and that was only the surface that was the obvious stuff but more prevalent to me was this sense that there was a static and people were struggling, struggling to keep up the pretenses and struggling to hold their shit down in a way that was socially acceptable. And behind closed doors, people were breaking up, people were going mad, people were quitting jobs and people were going traveling, looking for themselves. And I've noticed it more over the last 10 years. You get the facade, but it's really not what's going on. And I wanted to address that. So that's what Stories for the Apocalypse is about. And this is number one. And it's called Notes on the New Normal. Because as we emerged out of the pandemic, I found that this stuff was now intensified. I certainly didn't consider the pandemic to be in any way an apocalypse. It was a virus. It was a game changer. And it, and it, it was a warning. It was a warning about worse things to come if we don't address the way we're abusing the planet and, and using resources and carrying on with capitalism the way we are. You know, populism's rampant. And as capitalism fails more and more people, I think the statistic was that the 10 richest people on the planet doubled their wealth during the pandemic. And now we're coming out of the other side and we're all getting letters through the door telling us that they're sticking another grand on our energy bill. And something's got to give. So that's the essence of this book. That's the essence of what I'm writing about in these stories with these crazy characters. And it sits somewhere in between horror and black comedy. Because comedy is always a way, particularly, I guess, for us Brits, of cynically grabbing something that's bigger than ourselves, that's difficult to manage, something that we almost can't cope with, and hold a filter over it that makes it something we can laugh about in the pub, or in our front rooms, or in our kitchens, or on a walk with a friend who just needs a shoulder to cry on. That's what we do, we cope through comedy. But this is horror, this is horror. I, I studied horror... I did a short course through uh, Comma Press, a small publisher in Manchester not too long back. And, and Andy Murray, who ran the course, right at the start he said, horror is a broad church. So it's not just about ghosts and um, supernatural and demons. It, it's about the, the things that are right here behind our curtains that are going on in real life. And I find that far more terrifying than supernatural and spirits and the idea of all that stuff. And that's the essence of this book. So there is a sprinkling of supernatural going on, but... Essentially, and this is in the words of uh, Charlie Adlard of The Walking Dead, who very, very kindly provided me with a comment saying, uh, Stories for the Apocalypse is the kind of in the shadows suburban horror that I love, always in danger of getting out of control. And he said there was a British grimness there, a kind of did I just see that essence to this book. And that makes me very proud to hear that from someone like Charlie. And But that's what it is. It very much is my observational eye and my wider perception of that static that I mentioned earlier, that tension that is worse than ever, as we know too much. We have online access to wars and famine and ecological decline and, uh, and you know national debt. What's the next pandemic? What's the next variant? Oh, somebody said that and someone tweeted this. And people are really losing it. Because don't get me wrong, I'm right there suffering that same mania as everyone else. And I think... That's what writing is all about. It's channeling those felt notions, the lived experience, the learned experience, but also the observed from all around us. 
You can get the book, bantallenwriter.com. All the links will be there. It's available on ebook and audiobook from April the 7th, 2022. Hit me up on social media. I'm on Instagram at Ben Talon Writer. And also find me on Facebook, Ben Talon Writer, and on Twitter at Ben Talon.